It's the ninth day of rescue operations in Uttarkashi's uh, tunnel horror and the focus now is on keeping the 41 workers alive. Authorities try new methods to reach the trapped labourers who have now been stuck since parts of the tunnel collapsed. Now, new food pipeline has been brought in and a and robotic machine has also been deployed at the mishap site. <laughs> Day 9 at the Silkiara Tunnel in Uttarkashi and 41 workers continue to remain trapped. Monday saw rescue efforts go into plan and execute mode. Steps for the implementation of a fresh five-point plan have been actioned. A huge concern has been delivering food to the workers stuck in the tunnel. To supplement an existing four-inch pipeline, a 6-inch pipeline has been laid for around 60 meters. This is the breakthrough, the first breakthrough we were expecting for last 9 days. But because of some hurdles, small or big, we are not able to achieve. But let me tell you, the other uh, plan A, B, C or 1, 2, 3, 4 is still going on. There is relentlessly they will work and will try to look at the all, all options which have already been explained in previous briefings. Whatever thing will be sent before, Doctor ki salah li jayegi aur feasibility dekhi jayegi ki 6 inch ke pipe mein kya kya cheez ja sakti hai. To aid with the rescue work, the DRDO has sent two robots weighing 20 kilos and 50 kilos each. They will be deployed after testing their efficacy on ground. DRDO ke taraf se robot hai, ek 20 kilo ka, ek 50 kilo ka hai. Robot hai ki wo dharti pe chal ke aage jata hai. To hum ye koshish kar rahe hai, wo ja sakke. Lekin meri apprehension ye hai, site ka condition dekhte hai ki wo rate ki tarah cheez hai. Drills and other heavy machinery are being sourced from Odisha and Gujarat. Since they are too heavy to be airlifted, a railway route is being used to transport them. Roads are also being constructed to move heavy machinery to the point where vertical drilling will be done. The work is the most important thing and the big work of BRO is being made to approach the road. And today, और आज देर रात तक या कल सुबह तक इसमें हम इसको पूरा होने की उम्मीद कर रहे हैं इस एंड से जो काम होना है उसके लिए। We are right away from the tunnel. We have walked all over the top of the hill top from where the drilling machine will be drilling vertically on the tunnel. We had one and more where 40 laborers are standing. But why we are standing here? This is one of the JCB kind of machine engaged by the border road organization so that other drilling machines, the heavy drill machinery which has to be brought in to drill on the top of the tunnel will move through this way. International tunneling expert Arnold Dix has been called in. He offered prayers at this makeshift temple at the main entrance of the tunnel before he headed down to the main site. Dix will be working with the multi-agency team on ground. It's looking very positive. That's why we've come here with all of the experts. I've got the best experts for this Himalayan geology here with me. I'm just one. And we're going back to the office to talk about what we've seen. And we need to compare what we've seen here above the tunnel with what we know is happening in the tunnel. And this actually helps us make the proper decision. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi continues to closely monitor the rescue efforts. Chief Minister Pushkar Dhami briefed him about the latest developments earlier in the day. A high-level team of the PMO is also on site, coordinating the efforts. So machines are here, officials are here, the experts are also here. What we all are waiting right now is the safe rescue of those 41 laborers who are stranded there for the last nine days. But also questions must be raised on the lapses while this tunnel was getting constructed. In Uttarkashi with camera person Prem Singh, Mohammad Ghazali for NDTV. Meanwhile, killer apathy on the roads of Bengaluru cost two lives. A mother and her young daughter, a 23-year-old woman and her nine-month-old baby were killed when the woman stepped on a naked live wire on the roads of the IT capital of the country. What a shame. As three power department officials are suspended, NDTV asks, where does the real accountability lie for such criminal negligence? A 
It was just before the break of dawn on Sunday and at this very spot on a sidewalk, a tragedy that would send shivers down the spine of any citizen struck. 23-year-old Saundarya and her 9-month-old baby. Having just arrived in Bengaluru on a bus from Kadalore in Tamil Nadu, Saundarya was quickly racing to her parents' home with her husband by her side and her 9-month-old daughter in her arms. That's when she got trapped in a live wire hidden amongst the dangling and fallen optic fiber cables on the side of a road. All that her husband heard was a sudden shriek. There was nothing he could do as he helplessly begged for help. The enormous voltage of the live Bescom wire left Saundarya and her daughter ablaze. Saundarya was on the phone with her mother when she stepped on the live cable. One mother thane itavlu kirchak start madlo yake sami yanadru galate ne malin ke kannada tamil bitre ber bhasha barala alla re go bus stop go 2 km dura aste nan road ge bande opara milge nanu mogu na kapadakagila Saundarya was recently married to Santosh Kumar who works as a salesman in a private firm in Tamil Nadu's Neyveli After celebrating Deepavali with them she decided to visit her parents in Bengaluru I uh, really uh, feel sad to see this all this incidents uh, really uh, uh, no words to tell and like uh, so we are facing these problems and also like uh, the MLA and MP they have given uh, they have made some promises uh, for my brother in law and for my sister and further uh, so we need to we need to check so what is going to happen in future While five senior officials of the Bengaluru Electricity Supply Company Limited have been suspended that is certainly not enough This is death due to negligence and it needs stern action and punishment At Whitefield the tech center of a global city there is shock and anger It has been 15 years that I have been living here but this is the first time it has come to my notice about it's like very devastating isn't it like I was in shock and we always every day go you know from this road the you know respective authorities definitely needs to take this as something very alarming an incident of electrocution in 2019 triggered a resident to file an FIR in 9 months of the financial year 2022 to 23 121 fatal electrical accidents under Biscom Over 700 lives lost due to accidental electrocution since 2015 in Bengaluru. Biscom is responsible for power distribution in 8 districts of Karnataka. It covers an area of 41,092 square kilometers with a population of over 207 lakhs. Random and haphazard internet cables and electric wires have been Bengaluru's death traps for a long time. Citizen groups have been fighting this for two decades. yet there has been no concrete action further uh, investigation is going on madam going on uh, from electrical inspectorate once the final report received from the electrical inspectorate i will take action madam we might simply ignore a dangling cable like this but it is only when a live wire gets hidden amongst them and claims the life of innocent people bengaluru wakes up but how many such wake up calls does bengaluru need will suspension of officials be enough or compensation to the family be enough the cable menace as well as the live wire menace in bengaluru does seek a definite end with camera person govin kathibaraman in bengaluru for nd tv moving on to some political action now heated battle on for the state of rajasthan in fact as the campaign peaks still remember the state will be voting on the 25th of this month and the campaigning for the state of Rajasthan ends on 23rd doing the heavy lifting for the Bharatiya Janata Party prime minister narendra modi himself in fact uh, he addressed a rally in hanumangarh rajasthan and also then held a road show in bikaner prime minister attacked the congress government in the state on the corruption plank without naming the chief minister prime minister modi referred to the corruption cases being probed in rajasthan and said those who have looted rajasthan will be in jail soon aapke liye kalyani mere bhaiyo behno main aaj aapko guarantee dene aaya hu मैं आपको गारंटी देने आया हूं जिसने गरीब को लूटा है 
उसे छोड़ा नहीं जाएगा यहां राजस्थान में भी वो दिन दूर नहीं जब गरीबों को लूटने वाले सलाखों के पीछे दिन गढ़ते होंगे Meanwhile, Rajasthan Chief Minister Ashok Gehlot, uh, the incumbent Chief Minister, who is fighting a battle of his life uh, to try and change the reverse, the tradition in Rajasthan of revolving door politics. My colleague Harsha Kumari Singh caught up with him on an exclusive campaign trail of the Chief Minister. The Chief Minister told NDTV BJP had learned the term guarantee from the Congress. Take a look at this conversation. <laughs> वो तो बुखला गए हैं राजस्थान के परफॉर्मेंस को इतने अच्छे काम किए इतनी स्कीम हमारे आई है इतने अच्छे कानून पास हुए इतनी अच्छी गारंटी हम दे रहे हैं उनके बाद कहना कुछ भी नहीं है इसलिए वो कभी जादूगर की बात करेंगे कभी मेरे मित्र की बात करेंगे कभी मेरे मित्र बताएंगे कभी वापस वो कमेंट कर देंगे बाप बेटे दोनों पर कमेंट कर देंगे ये मैं समझता हूँ कि उनकी बुखलाट का पैसा है Now to some important news. In fact, days after his uh, threat video on Air India, National Investigation Agency has registered a fresh case against a Khalistani terrorist, Gurpatwant Pandu. In the press release, the agency says the case has been registered under various sections of IPC and UAPA for attempts to target and disrupt transportation sector in India. The case comes days after Pandu, who is uh, said to be based out of Canada. threatened passengers choosing to fly air india remember there has been a major diplomatic uh, controversy ongoing controversy between canada and india over the killing of another khalistani terrorist hardeep singh nijjar who was shot dead in canada the canadian prime minister justin trudeau had accused the indian agents for carrying out this murder without offering any concrete evidence so let me a uh, very quickly go across to my colleague neeta who's joining us with more details on this neeta uh, he this man largely has uh, a nuisance value as far as india is concerned but every threat that is made a serious threat that is made against india and once again reminding people of that kanishka air crash uh, uh, you, you know this has to be investigated and taken very seriously Absolutely, you know he has been on the radar of NIA since 2019. He was designated as an individual terrorist on 1st of July 2020, a proclaimed offender on 29th November 2022. NBWs have also been issued against him, and his properties in Amritsar land has also been seized. So he is an uh, offender, not to say the least. Even you know yesterday when there was a security breach when India and Australia was playing, there was a security be- breach. To that person also he has say he is saying. that he would be rewarding him 10000 uh, dollars so he has a kind of nuisance value but in this case india obviously wants to take this uh, threat very seriously because it's a ca- carrier which operates not only from canada but uh, other sectors also international sectors also in the threat in the video that he had released he had stated that from uh, november 19th onwards air india would cease to fly on international sectors in fact he had gone ahead and requested all his fellow uh, six also to fly other international airlines because he said india was uh, uh, in india was fighting against them and had also declared uh, sfj that is sick for justice unlawful under uapa so obviously this has been ongoing war but as far as nia is concerned this is the second case now which they have registered against him and obviously he is already a nbw uh, already a proclaimed offender so obviously the case would be going on against him Ankit. Neeta, thank you for all those uh, details against this man who openly, from the Canadian soil, professes anti-India hatred. <clears throat> Moving on now, uh, just days after he was uh, sacked by the OpenAI board, Chat GPT maker Sam Altman has been offered a new position of heading the research unit at Microsoft. Remember, Microsoft is the biggest investor in OpenAI, and uh, uh, which, in fact, uh, unceremoniously sacked Altman. Forty-eight hours after a chaotic ouster, Sam Altman is back in the news once again. After being unceremoniously sacked by OpenAI, the platform that owns ChatGPT and the firm that he co-founded, Altman has now been snapped up by Microsoft 
to become the new CEO of their research wing. The news was broken by Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, who posted on the platform X, saying, and I quote, We are extremely excited to share the news that Sam Ortman and Greg Brockman, together with colleagues, will be joining Microsoft to lead a new advanced AI research team. Sam Altman was quick to respond, replying on the post, the mission continues. Remember, Microsoft has been a major investor in open AI. Altman, the one who developed the revolutionary chat GPT and was globally known as the face of open AI, was fired over a Google Meet last Friday. The open AI board accused him of not being consistently candid in his communications with the board hindering its ability to exercise its responsibilities. The president of OpenAI, Greg Brockman, was also removed from the board the day after. But the board never gave details of the exact reasons for the ouster. But by the weekend, there was a buzz that major investors in OpenAI wanted to bring Altman back. There was also speculation after Sam Altman posted a picture of himself wearing a guest ID badge of OpenAI, saying this was the first and the last time that he was wearing it. Meanwhile, ex-Twitch CEO Emmett Scheer has been named the new OpenAI boss. Scheer added on X that the entire communications around Sam Altman were very badly handled. Bureau Report, NDTV. In an exclusive interview with NDTV, Sonia Singh, Australian Foreign Minister, shares her thoughts on the India-Australia World Cup final. Ms. Wong said it was a pretty exciting match and it was fitting that the final coincided with the 2 plus 2 dialogues between India and Australia. Hello and welcome to the NDTV Dialogues, a conversation of ideas. The big idea this week is the India-Australia 2 plus 2 dialogue. Joining me is Penny Wong, Foreign Minister of Australia. Thank you for being on the Dialogues, Ms. Wong. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And congratulations on that amazing World Cup win. Do you, are you still celebrating? Thank, yes, we are. I think we're still a, a little uh, surprised, but we're very, very happy to, to, see, to see the result. Commiserations to India. It's an amazing team you have. Um, but uh, I was saying before, uh, the Travis Head is, uh, is from my hometown, so we're pretty happy about that. <laughs> he did really well. I know, it was really fantastic. And I think, really, it's kind of fitting that we had an India-Australia final. We've got a two plus two I dialogue know. happening. So it's a great time for India-Australia. We didn't script that. That just <laughs> happened, right? <laughs> When, when did you hear? I believe you were on a plane when you were getting the scores. Well, yes, we were. We were on a plane and it was, I think, 3 for 47 or something. I thought, oh, well, we're not going to win. And then the next, the next update was, looks like we're going to win. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty exciting. 